So you've got 21 total cases in the country. Mm -hmm. and Filed. Filed. And how many of them have been convicted and gone to prison? I think none. OK. And how about you, Ms. Brown? How many have been convicted and gone to prison? Uh, Senator McCaskill, we do have a criminal liaison unit that uh, advocates and, and attempts to refer our cases over for criminal prosecution. Whether or not a criminal prosecutor accepts our case and is investigating it would be non-public information that I'm not able to disclose. However, I will say as of yet, there have not been any indictments in the cases we've brought. Okay. But you can't tell me about, they can't talk about whether or not investigations are ongoing, but that's always right. obviously in the context of a specific case. You can certainly say, if you know, how many cases are currently ongoing. Do you know how many cases are currently ongoing in terms of investigations? I do not know as we okay. today. Well, that's kind of important. And I would ask for the committee um, that you provide that information. Because here's the deal. I, I respectfully disagree with you, Ms. Hollinger. The first line of defense is not consumer education. The first line of defense is putting the crooks in prison. Because when crooks go to prison, other crooks notice. This is an underbelly of scam artists that are working this scam all over the country. And the most effective way to ferret this out and protect people like Mr. Malamo is to go after them with criminal prosecutors. So let me ask you this. Do either one of your offices have a liaison with the National District Attorneys Association and the local prosecutors that have the authority, like the DA in Manhattan, to bring criminal prosecutions? Um, I would have to check with our office and find out. We do have a criminal liaison unit that works with those groups. Okay, so what I would like to know from that criminal liaison group, if they would communicate back how many local prosecutors they have met with, how many local prosecutors they have brought cases to for prosecution. Because what happens is in the federal government, this gets all tied up. And, and you all don't have prosecutors. All you can do is call justice. And if justice is busy, then justice is not interested. And we've got to be much more aggressive about this. Now, I have jurisdiction over the FTC, as you know, in my subcommittee on commerce. You do have the authority to clear up fraudulent advertising. Have you taken any actions against the fraudulent advertising that's going on where precious metals say this is a safe investment? There's no risk, because that's fraudulent. I am not aware of any uh, cases that we brought against national advertisers. The cases that we testified to in our written testimony uh, were, were marketers that were presenting this as a safe and profitable investment. Okay. Well, that, I think, would be the second line of defense, um, is going after the fraudulent advertising. Um, you know, you can turn on satellite radio right now and hear it as you drive home tonight. Um, get on one of the XM stations, and you'll hear the fraudulent advertising. It won't be hard to find them because it's everywhere, where they are not having to follow the same rules as a lot of these investment firms don't advertise on radio because they can't get in the disclosures. Right. They're too long for the radio ads. But these guys don't have those disclosure requirements. So I would ask that your, um, that your agency take a much harder look at the fraudulent advertising that's going on. I really think it's time that federal agencies look beyond what they have been doing here and try to get into a meaningful partnership with local prosecutors who are going to be much more responsive to victims who don't have the luxury of cherry picking what cases they take. You know, I like to tease my friends that have been U.S. attorneys. If only you had to answer a 911 call, you would understand what law enforcement's really like. Because federal prosecutors get to pick what they take. Local prosecutors don't. And if there's a crime committed in a jurisdiction, a local state prosecutor doesn't really have the ability to say, I'm not interested. And I think we're missing an opportunity to get meaningful enforcement here because there doesn't appear to be a real effort to coordinate with local prosecutors. You've heard it from Mr. Spicer, and I can't imagine a more potent or powerful witness that doing civil actions is not going to stop these people. Shutting down their businesses, they're just going to go somewhere else. But once they have a felony record and once they've spent time in prison, then you've got a horse of a different color. I, I'm, I'm going to venture to say, Mr. Spicer, I have a feeling that when you finish doing whatever you need to do in connection with your criminal prosecution, you're probably going to avoid commodity trading. Yes, ma'am, of course. Yeah. Uh, altogether. I, I, uh, uh, financials altogether. Financials altogether. 
Um, and and I, I, I would be surprised if he returned to that. On the other hand, he can probably name you dozens of people he knows that have had been the victim of your excellent work in terms of litigating, but ha that has not had a deterrent effect. So I would look forward to hearing from your criminal liaison uh, department, and we will have, um, through this committee and through my subcommittee, we will follow up with, with the FTC and the criminal liaison to see how much local prosecutors are actually getting pulled into the loop. Thank you. Thank you both very much.